You're watching Dog Eared Musings and I'm Monica's Hands. And today we're making the only recipe from other thing that did not make me want to dry heave, the shepherd's pie. I know you all wanted me to make the jellied salmon. While that might've been funner to film, I'm too much of a yogurt girl, I guess. If you know, you know. You probably saw Mother Thing floating around Bookstagram last October as the ultimate weird girl Halloween read. But if you didn't, this book centers on a young woman named Abby who knows it's stereotypical to have a fraught relationship with her mother-in-law, but for her, it's a little bit different. The tension comes from beyond the grave, with her mother-in-law haunting her and her husband. This book is so much more than a trite book about mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws butting heads. Through dark humor, Hogarth explores themes of motherhood, bonding, mental health, all through the lens of expectations. Abby has unspoken expectations on how every relationship should look. Her relationship with her mother, mother-in-law, her husband, her co-workers, and even the patients who she caretakes. Because of the nature of these relationships, Abby finds her expectations never meeting reality. Growing up, her mother puts her in dangerous situations where she finds more security in her couch. Her mother-in-law objectively hates her and fills each conversation with snide, bitter remarks. And she wants to be the perfect wife, but at every turn, Abby finds herself unable to meet her own demands. And with each disappointment, Abby becomes a broken expectation that's treated like a scab or a canker sore that Abby just keeps running over the same bruise, trying to navigate it from a different angle but it still ultimately leaves her hurting, full of shame and resentment. Is Abby likable? I think that's beside the point. I mean, she does really awful things, but because we spend most of the time in her head, I found myself not empathetic, but watching in horror and understanding of the trajectory that Abby projects herself into. Her character is almost like a fun house mirror for all the times our own expectations are not met, for all the times we run through the ways interactions should have gone or could have gone on the treadmill or on the bus home, all of the unspoken disappointments and rejections. And honestly, if anyone needed to heal an inner child, it's Abby. Instead, it is the ruminating and unprocessing and the placement of pressure on other relationships that continues the cycle of Abby's downfall until the bitter, bloody end. And one can only imagine the next steps of how Abby's life goes. If she and Ralph stay married, the pressure she'll put herself into as a mother, and the extended pressure she would put on a future child. Once I finished this book, I found myself wanting to sit Abby down and let her cry it out. I wonder if someone had taken the time to really hear her out and give her story an alternative end. So I decided to take this moment to mother Abby. Hypothetic. I'm imagining her sitting at my kitchen island as I make her shepherd's pie with a ton more spices than her mother might have made. But I figure that regardless, this is the food version of a bear hug, an alternative route to the disastrous chicken dinner scene that will haunt me the next time I decide to eat chicken. So this is my version of shepherd's pie and my ruminations on Mother Thing. If you've read it, I'm excited to hear your thoughts too. This has been Dog-Eared Musings. I'm Monica. Happy readings and happy eatings.